What's up everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Beth. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the interior in the all new 2021 Hyundai Elantra. So it's on a completely new platform, completely new from the ground up here for this Elantra for 2021. And uh, they made some really nice improvements. So it's a little bit longer, a little bit wider than before. And that actually helps out the interior here as well, which actually is a little bit roomier than it was before as well. And uh, in addition to the extra room, I mean the extra tech here, uh, this is easily hands down the highest tech feeling interior in its segment. I mean, no one else offers a 10 inch screen like this does. No one else has fully digital gauges like this does. All those things, really wow you when you first sit in here especially if you're in one of these limited ones if you go for lower trims you're not going to have as large of screens it's not going to feel quite as impressive as this but it still i think is a really cool design for this interior with this uh, you know, these vents that go across uh, you know the whole width of the vehicle and everything it's a really cool look yeah i will say i do like it a lot however being the passenger i do feel like i am in a cockpit because that is basically how the seating arrangement is here which is fine but if you don't like that you might not like this yeah and that is one thing that hyundai said they were going for is they wanted to give it this driver centric feel which is fine when you're the driver but it's like they don't consider the other passengers in a lot of these cars um, just to try and make them sportier i guess and i mean yeah it feels sporty uh, at least this isn't quite as radical as some other driver centric cockpits i think but yeah it's it's a little much like no one else has this like huge grab handle here like this does you know right and it's just it's okay but like it's not i don't i don't know why you're trying to do that in this car yeah it's not a sports car right there are sportier versions of the elantra um that you can get but you know for the regular one i wish they would have at least yeah maybe gotten rid of the grab handle so it's a little less racy but anyway uh first thing moving on to the seats here um they're nice soft leather seats here in the limiteds that's only in the limited you get cloth seats and everything other than a limited so um, you're gonna have to go up to this top trim which by the way retails as tested at uh, just under twenty six and a half thousand dollars it's like twenty six four fifty and um, but anyway they are you know perforated I like these little designs you have here in the stitching they're heated seats as well um, but that is it you don't have any cold seats which is something that you you're starting to be able to get in some of the competitors but it's still really rare so I don't hold it against them except that the old Elantra you could get cold seats and that is something that now the only way you get cold seats in an Elantra is actually in a limited hybrid I don't know why the hybrid they think you can get cold seats but you're not allowed to get them here in the regular limited with the gas yeah that's weird so they penalize <laughs> you for not getting the hybrid um, but other than that they're nice there's also no memory seat functionality that is also reserved for only the hybrid I don't understand that choice either but um, yeah so actually technically the highest trim of the nicest Elantra you'll be able to get will be that hybrid limited I'm not sure why they hold out on some of those features but anyway I think they're soft comfortable seats yeah they are really comfortable one thing I will say once again is that the seat height is non adjustable for the passenger and also it is a manual seating adjustment but that is okay because of the price of this car it makes sense um however i just wish that you could adjust the height i always feel like i'm sitting up too high currently i am slouched in my seat i am not sitting up all the way but you know it makes it a little bit more comfortable for me because i don't feel like i'm towering over anything or you know my head is about to hit the ceiling so i don't know this does have a moon roof here so it might make it a little bit bigger if you don't get that option but once again it's just too high for me <laughs> yeah but the, yeah we do have a moonroof here that does cut out on a little bit of headroom you're right and so if you wanted to have the most headroom possible skip out on the moonroof which i believe is only on the base model and an sel without any options are the only ways you go without a moonroof here but that'll be the choice for you if you want the most headroom. This does have pretty good headroom though. This actually has a little bit more headroom than actually what you get in a Civic or a Corolla. Uh, I don't remember if the Civic has the height adjustment, but I'm pretty sure the Corolla does not. So it is pretty rare to have the height adjustment in this segment of vehicle, but it would be nice. I mean, there doesn't even have to be power. It could just be a crank to push down um, to have that seat a little bit lower. But anyway, so that's the only shortcoming here with these seats, um, but overall still, still good seats. Moving on to the steering wheel here in the uh, Elantra. It is very cool. It's a very bold new design here for Hyundai, completely unlike anything else they've done in the past. It has a really nice 9 and 3 grip. It's a pretty thick wheel as well.
well just for a normal little Elantra. Uh, has these huge 10 and 2 notches, which are almost comical for a non-sporty vehicle, uh, but they're uh, you know appreciated here since I'm an enthusiast. Uh, maybe if you're not an enthusiast, that'll seem a little overboard, but um, you also have this plastic part here, which does feel a little cheaper considering the rest of the wheel is nicely leather wrapped. Now that is something, by the way, it is not leather wrapped in lower trims. That is something that's an option on the SEL, I believe, and then this Limited has it. But overall, it's a really nice wheel. The only other shortcoming is I would wish that they would have offered a heated steering wheel here in the Limited, um, but that is still fairly rare, but that is something you can get now in the Mazda 3 in its higher turbo trim, and you can also get it in a Nissan Sentra, which actually undercuts this, and you can get a Nissan Sentra for about $1,000 less that has, you know, the heated steering wheel. Also, one thing that I usually don't talk about is the turn signal stocks and the windshield wiper stocks. It's not usually something worth mentioning, but in this vehicle, it has the new stocks that they have in the Sonata, which have these really cool, like, jeweled surfaces to them. It's just piano black plastic, but it just... It's really nice. I mean, it's nicer than I'd say most uh, turn signal stocks in most vehicles. And just a nice little touch, you know, they went the extra mile here with a few bits and pieces in the Elantra. But then, moving on to the tech here in the Elantra. First, you have these digital gauges. Now, this is something you can get as an option in an SEL, and then it's in the Limited. Everything else gets normal analog gauges with a tiny little screen in the middle. But these gauges are very cool. Um, it's kind of basically the same thing you get in a lot of the other Hyundais with digital gauges now, um, where you have several different themes you can choose from, or you can have those themes tied to the drive modes and so you can swap the drive modes and it'll change and they look very cool with the sport one having carbon fiber look to the back of them and you know just it's a, a nice thing and there's even additional ones beyond the drive mode ones you can have a more digitized look and stuff and it's very cool uh, very high resolution too for those gauges they almost look 3d with just how crisp the graphics are for those dials there it doesn't really do any any more functionality than a normal gauge cluster would though so unfortunately like in the middle there you'll see your basic trip information digital speed, all the basic stuff there, but then um, other than that, you just have adaptive cruise control and that display and then your compass and that's it. So you don't have any audio display there or anything like that. There's no cool map view or anything. You're getting some luxury models, you know, so it's a little more basic, but it still is really cool. Might not be totally necessary. Um, you know, I don't think it's something that's a must have feature, but it is really cool and great that you get that here in the limiteds. Uh, the only other thing though, is you have this strange panel here, which just has this ring, which is just printed on here. This is not illuminated, even though it kind of looks like it is. And it's just this huge chunk of plastic that I guess kind of gives a uniform look to this whole single piece. Cause this all is just one piece of glass with this in the infotainment screen. But this just seems unnecessary. I wish they would have like tapered this off or found some other way without having this enormous chunk of plastic that's like the size of my entire hand. So that's the only thing that's a little bit odd as far as design choices go. But then moving on to uh, the center screen here, it is very impressive. So it's a 10.25 inch screen, same size as the gauge cluster, uh, but it's a very nice widescreen display. And it's the same screen you get in any other Hyundai or Kia with this 10 inch screen. They have this newer software they've been running in the past year or two. And so one thing that I don't love though, is you have this basic screen here that always wants to default to just showing you a massive clock and your temperature and that's it. And I kind of wish that it would show you, you know, just this other menu screen instead, but you know, all the graphics and stuff are very cool. You can also customize those displays and the color themes and all that kind of stuff. Um, I really like it though. So, I mean, you have all these can be customized as well as far as their positioning and where all these buttons are, uh, but it all works very well. You know, radio controls are easy. And whenever you pull that up, you'll see it's like a vintage looking radio screen. I think it's just a kind of a cool touch there. And it's very easy. You also do have a tuning button here with uh, right next to your volume knob, but you don't have any actual tuning knob, uh, but those work well enough. It's not a huge huge deal. It is also very driver centric and tilted towards the driver. So for the passenger, I am currently sitting at a normal seat position and I found it kind of difficult to reach the screen and also all of the buttons. I would not be able to hit the buttons on the left hand side of the volume knob but I can reach the stuff on the right side. So that's just something if you're constantly having passengers in your vehicle, especially in the front, they're not gonna be able to have that much control of the screen and everything like that. So if you like to have constant control, that's great. But if you do like your passengers to be able to use the touchscreen and stuff like that, just one thing to think about. 
Yeah, and honestly, even as a driver here, the volume knob I cannot reach without leaning forward, um, which isn't great ergonomically. Everything's supposed to kind of be within easy reach, and the fact that the volume knob is even out of reach for me, in my position, me being 5'9", it's kind of strange. Usually that stuff isn't hard to reach, and um, you know all these buttons are like fully extending my arm to reach them. So not great there. Uh, I wish all this was maybe brought a little bit closer. Um, but other things with the screen, it does have uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard but another strange thing here this is a Hyundai and Kia thing I don't know if it was a supplier thing or what but this upgraded 10.25 inch screen has you know the smartphone integration but it is plugged in you have to have it wired but if you go for the base versions of the Elantra or any Elantra that does not have this huge screen it's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is far superior obviously because you don't have to plug in your phone you still get all that smartphone functionality and so you're kind of downgrading smartphone connectivity whenever you upgrade to this screen, which is exact opposite of what it should be. I don't know why that is that way, but that's the same thing in the Sonata. It's the same thing in all you know, the Sorento. Every new Hyundai and Kia product with this screen, I don't know why they haven't made it wireless for this big screen, but something is holding them up from doing that. So that's the only other backwards thing with that. Uh, the navigation maps are fine. It's the same basic Hyundai maps, you know, that are pretty low tech, but they work fine. Um, you also have the sounds of nature, which is this quirky thing that um, really shows off the stereo system. So we have calm sea waves right now. And it's just it's interesting i don't know yeah it's okay i think if you're like just sitting in the car that's fine but if you're driving around i wouldn't necessarily use it but you know teach their own yeah i guess it's an easy way to show off the sound system to your buddies or something uh by the way the sound system is a bose stereo here in the upper trims i believe it's an option on the sel but it's an eight speaker bose system it does sound very good it sounded a little bit flat with its default settings but i tweaked it a little bit to make it sound a little bit fuller um but it still is a far cry from the mazda bose stereo that is hands down one of the best stereos in any vehicle under fifty thousand dollars is the mazda 3 um, and so if you are wanting the best stereo experience in a compact sedan, Mazda 3 hands down, I don't even have to think twice about it, like that's the one to get. But this is still a nice stereo. I'd say it's certainly an upgrade from stuff like when you get in a Honda Civic or something like that. Um, and even the Corolla, for example, has a, a much worse stereo than this does. So this is definitely one of the upper ones in this segment, but it still isn't amazing. I'd say it's probably on par with the Bose system you get in the Nissan Sentra as well. But nice that they give you that upgrade there as well. And uh, so overall, you know, pretty good, nice high resolution screen. Coming down beneath that, like I said, you have those few shortcut buttons and the volume knob. And then you have your climate controls here, um, which still has kind of this slightly dated uh, little display here for your climate but it's not a big deal and I do just like the little climate control knob it's very easy to control very simple and straightforward and so no real complaints there moving on to storage space here in the Elantra it is uh, I'd say average for the segment of vehicle it's not best in class for sure but it's not worst either um, so anyway first thing in the doors here you have a little pocket with a bottle holder which is nice to have and I also like this door trim kind of has this like denim like cloth uh, here that's kind of cool. We also see it on the backs of the seats here. It's kind of an interesting little design touch. Uh, but then coming over to the center here, um, you do have this wireless charging pad, which is something you get as an option on SELs, and then you get it also here uh, in the Limited. And uh, it's a good size space there. You also see two USB jacks. One's just for charging, and one is actually for your smartphone integration, as well as a normal power outlet in there. But if you're the passenger, you cannot use any of the wireless charging pad unless you give your phone to the driver and they could put it on there because of this center channel that's right here. It is in the way and while we're on that topic, I will say that if you're somebody who splays your legs out when you sit, I am not one of those, but if you are somebody that does that and you're on a long trip or something, this cockpit style seating makes it very hard, especially if somebody who's really tall is sitting in the seat. This is not going to be very comfortable for you, just saying. Yeah, and that's something obviously the driver doesn't have that issue because I have no huge you know, tunnel here or grab handle, so it's much easier for me, although unfortunately this is still hard plastic. That is something that I believe both the Mazda 3 and the Nissan Sentra have some padding here, so those feel a little more luxurious in the materials than this does, and so this is, yeah. Not great here for the driver either, but at least I can splay without having this huge pillar in my way. But while we're on the topic of plastics as well, the whole vehicle just feels a little cheaper than some of the nicest stuff out there these days. Because like the dashboard isn't padded, 
it's all just hard plastic and stuff. And even like a Toyota Corolla pads this these days and has like nice soft vinyl on there and stuff. So there is still a decent amount of hard plastic in here and a little bit more than you get in a lot of the stuff, especially like the Nissan Sentra that has tons of padding everywhere and feels super plush. So does the Mazda 3. Even the Civic feels a little more plush than this. So I think Hyundai still is strong with the hard plastics, unfortunately. And also one interesting thing about all of the plastics is that on the driver's side, you have this grayish color and it goes over to the door, but on the passenger side, from this center channel, it goes all black to my side. So my door is black and his door is that grayish color. So it's very interesting. Another thing that really adds to the high-tech feeling of the Elantra, I think, is this ambient lighting, which they do better than any of the other vehicles in this segment. The Sentra has some nice little touches, and um, you know, but none of them have the amount of ambient lighting you get here in the Elantra. It's really cool. It's this very bright strip that goes across the entire dashboard here, and it's 64 different colors you can choose from as well. So it just it really sets this apart at night. It looks way cooler than basically any other interior in this segment at night at time, and it's just it's a nice little touch. It's you know, not something that's super expensive, I don't think. I wish that more companies would add that. Yeah, I really love ambient lighting because just the amount of brightness that comes into the cabin, I just think it looks really nice. And you can actually see things. It's surprising when you don't have it. Yeah, yeah, with some of the other vehicles we've been reviewing recently, it's like, wow, this doesn't have ambient lighting. It feels so dark in here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really nice to have. And uh, yes, yeah, so that is something also, by the way, that it's only on the Limited. You can't even get that as an option on an SEL. So you have to go up to the Limited if you want that ambient lighting. Um, that's one of the things that I think would kind of tempt me towards going for the Limited because it is a really nice touch. Moving on to the other uh, storage stuff. Um, the cup holders here are pretty cool in the launcher because, um, so they have a lower position where you can fit bottles in and stuff, and that's you know totally good, but then there's also, you can pull this up and then spin it around, and then you can have this higher position so you can have a little bit of a shallower cup holder there if you're you know holding cans or smaller things there. It's much better than having them drop down into some super deep cup holders. But it's great to give you that customization, and you could potentially, if you're okay with the more shallow cup holder, that could be an extra little hidden storage area because you can you know stash some stuff there underneath there so that's kind of a, a nice little touch there and then you have the center armrest which is um, just vinyl-y kind of rubbery feeling not super expensive or anything but is soft enough and so anyway you open that up and you'll see a fairly shallow cubby but it is decent um, you know and you have a good size bin there, but no additional hookups or anything in there. So, I mean, that's pretty par for the course. I think the only one that does this better is the Civic. The Civic has a massive center bin that's uh, actually about as much space and storage space as you would get in like a lot of crossover SUVs. Like it is, the Civic is still the king as far as, you know, interior storage, but this is very on par with the rest of the stuff out there. So no complaints there. Uh, and then moving on to the back seat here in the Elantra, that is one area they did improve a lot. So they actually, um, with this new platform, they're able to give 2.3 inches of additional rear leg room um, for the Elantra over the old one. So that means that I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself, I easily have, I'd say three to four inches of leg room to spare. Much more spacious than the old Elantra for sure. Um, now headroom, even though this vehicle is actually almost an inch lower than the old Elantra, they didn't sacrifice headroom. So headroom is identical um, as far as the dimensions go. So, I mean, it's still not a ton of headroom I only have you know an inch or two to spare because you are kind of sitting up higher it's like stadium seating for those back seats compared to the front ones here but you know it should be okay for most people as long as you're not too tall and lanky you also will find a fold down center armrest with two cup holders built into it on the limiteds and on the SELs with an option package otherwise you don't actually get any cup holders back there at all um, which isn't great because you don't get that center armrest because whenever you look forward you'll see there are no air vents there is no USB jacks or any additional cup holders you do have bottle holders in the doors but that's it so that is one thing even the Kia Forte which this shares a platform with does have rear air vents here in the higher trims um, so you don't get that here a lot of the other comp competition does have at least one USB jack back there some even have two so to have no hookups back there is also another sore spot of the Elantra so those are the few things that it does fall short on but at least you do have a good amount of space back there so um, you know all things considered not bad but definitely not the best as far as you know all the other amenities go trunk space here in the Elantra is also um, actually a little bit bigger than it has been in the past and they say it's actually a little bit larger than the Corolla for example so um, it is one of the you know best in class trunk spaces here and so I mean it's a nice long and wide space uh, beneath 
underneath the floor, you just see a spare tire. And there is some extra space there, but there aren't any actual bins or anything. Um, so it's mostly just the, you know, what you see there above the floor of the trunk. And if you want additional space, you can also fold down the seat, the rear seats here. But yes, yeah, so that's about all our thoughts here on the interior of the Elantra. Overall, um, you know, they did a great job upgrading this interior. I mean, like I said, highest tech in its class, really cool looking, even if this isn't for everyone with, you know, the driver centric thing and the plastics are kind of cheaper than some of the others. I think the tech kind of makes up for it. It's just going to come down to what type of person you are. Do you want everything to be soft and plush? Go for the Mazda 3, go for the Nissan Sentra. You know, some of those I think do that stuff better. But if you're someone who just wants tech and you don't care about the hard plastics as much, then this is going to be your choice. Unfortunately, there is no perfect pick in this segment uh, because, you know, there's one sacrifice or another. It's either you have less tech and more plushness or less plush and more tech. So that's just gonna come down to what your personal preference is. But I think this interior is fantastic. I think they did a great job on it. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty, pretty impressed. But uh, anyway, that's all of our thoughts here on the interior of the Elantra. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Huge thanks to Hyundai for providing us here with the new Elantra to review for you guys today. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take, Take care. care.